Introduction, Basic Electrical Engineering. In this topic, we are going to learn about basic concepts of charge, energy, electricity, voltage and power and its related units. Electricity is integral part of our life. We find use of electricity everywhere. If we look at our home, we find many examples be it bulbs, fans, many kitchen appliances like refrigerator, kettle, appliances like washing machine, or air conditioners. The use of electricity is seen everywhere in our day-to-day -day life. In order to understand these concepts, we need to understand the core, that is the structure of an atom, and why it is the core of the electricity. Note. Though the core of everything is atom, however to remain in context, we will focus on the metals, used in circuits. Let's understand, the details about an, atomic structure. The center of the circle, is called as, nucleus of atom. Nucleus consists of protons, and neutrons. Neutrons have no charge, and protons have a positive charge. Electrons are negatively charged and moves along the orbit around the nucleus. Note. The electrons are, much lighter than, the protons in the nucleus, and, they can move very easy, with almost the speed of light. Electrons move around the nucleus, in circular orbits. Each orbit, can contain maximum, of only a particular number, of electrons. The first orbit, can hold maximum of two electrons, the second orbit can hold eight electrons, the third orbit can hold up to eighteen, and so on. The number of electrons in the last, outer orbit, or shell determines, the reactivity of the atom. When the outer shell is, full, having maximum holding capacity of that, shell, or orbit, the atom is stable, and least reactive. Note. The outer shell is known as, the valence shell, and the electrons found in it are called, valence electrons. If the outermost shell, or orbit, has much less electron than, its maximum capacity, then, it becomes a, loosely bonded electron, and will have the tendency to, move between atoms and hence, generates conductivity to the, material. Materials can be either conductors, or insulators. Note. Materials that are conductors, like most metals, allow free electrons to move freely throughout the solid. While insulators, like plastic, or glass, limit the movement of the electrons, holding them tightly. Let's understand it with the example of copper, as we will use copper wires to explain circuits. Copper has 29 protons, electrons and 35 neutrons. If we see the structure of the atom, first shell has 2 electrons, second will have maximum of 8, third will have maximum 18, and the last shell will have 1 electron. As discussed earlier, this 1 electron will become a free electron and loosely bonded, and will leave the shell, to freely move, across the metal between atoms, under the influence of, any external force, positive charge. Now, the nucleus will have, 29 protons, surrounded by, 28 electrons, and hence, the net charge will come positive, and it will be positively charged. One free electron carrying, negative charge, will roam between, atoms freely under, any influencing factor, or force. Hence, in copper, we have, negatively charged electrons, present to move in directions. Charge of one proton is 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 column, and charge of one electron is minus 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 column. Note. Opposite charges attracts each other and same charges. Negative, negative, positive, positive, repels each other. Charges exert force on each other, attractive, or repulsive. It is called the electrostatic force. The amount of force acting on two charges depends on how far they are from each other, 
and can be calculated using Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law F12 is the electrostatic force exerted on charge 1 due to the presence of charge 2. R is the distance between Q1 and Q2. The formula of Coulomb law F12 equals KQ1 Q2 upon R square. Now coming back to our circuit example. The copper wire filled with countless copper atoms. As our free electron is floating in a space between atoms, it's pulled and prodded by surrounding charges in that space. In this chaos the free electron eventually finds a new atom to latch onto. So, the negative charge of that electron ejects another valence electron from the atom. Now a new electron is drifting through free space looking to do the same thing. This chain effect can continue on and on to create a flow of electrons called electric current. So what is electricity? It's a flow of electron per second. It is measured in ampere. An ampere is the number of electrons having a total charge of one coulomb moving through a given cross section in one second. However, in the absence of any external force, the free electrons moves randomly and do not produce any effective electricity. If we include external force, the electrons will start moving in particular direction and will cause electricity. We will learn more about this external force in coming topics. There are two forms of electricity. Static electricity and current electricity. Static electricity exists when there is a buildup of opposite charges on objects separated by an insulator. Static, as in at rest, electricity exists until the two groups of opposite charges can find a path between each other to balance the system out. Opposite charges build up on each of the conductors. Until their attraction is so great charges can flow through the air. One of the most dramatic examples of static discharge is lightning. Lightning is a naturally occurring electrostatic discharge during which two electrically charged regions in the atmosphere or ground temporarily equalize themselves, causing the instantaneous release of energy. Charges equalizing through an air gap can result in a visible shock as the traveling electrons collide with electrons in the air which become excited and release energy in the form of light. Note: When the charges do find a means of equalizing, a static discharge occurs. The attraction of the charges becomes so great that they can flow through even the best of insulators, air, glass, plastic, rubber, etc. Static discharges can be harmful depending on what medium the charges travel through and to what surfaces the charges are transferring. Current electricity. Current electricity is the form of electricity which makes all of our electrical and electronic gizmos possible. This form of electricity exists when charges are able to constantly flow as opposed to static electricity where charges gather and remain at rest. Current electricity is dynamic, charges are always on the move. 